What's going on, y'all? Okay, Sisterhood of Hip Hop. Oh, I came on Candy Strong right in there. Mm-mm, yeah, she tell it back. Sisterhood of Hip Hop. I think it's episode four, season one. It's cute. It's cute. Let me tell you something. Thank God Diamond was not in this whole episode because, oh, uh, every time, every time she gets on my screen, she makes me want to go the fuck off on her. Why didn't they record that? I apologize, y'all. Oh, because it come on two minutes later. Okay, fine. I'm sorry. I'm, you know, sometimes when you put stuff on record and, you know, sometimes it recorded, sometimes it don't. I was just making sure my roots are terrible. But, um, anyway, so Sisterhood of Hip Hop, look, Diamond, and it, it continued this little situation from last week when they met at that little, the, the little hookah bar, whatever the fuck, and the way that Diamond came at Naima, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Naima wasn't being shady. Of course, you're going to get a couple of people that go hard for Diamond. I don't understand why. But, you know, that's your preference. That's what you do. But even Naima cleared that shit up. She wasn't being shady. Then they trying to say that it was constructive criticism that um, Diamond was giving. Diamond tried to say that shit, too, when um, Sia pulled her away. Bitch, that was nowhere near no goddamn constructive criticism. You was being shady, and you was doing that shit on purpose to come back at her because you thought she was being shady to you at the beginning. Once a fucking again. This is episode four, and I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to continue to say it until, you know, motherfuckers get the goddamn point. Diamond, who the fuck are you? You sitting there talking about some, let me teach this infant. Bitch, what? Y'all damn near the same age. Yeah, you probably a couple years older than her. But bitch, what you done? But been in crime, ma. Like, come the fuck on. That's all your claim. Okay, yeah, you reach minimum success. What a lot of people know you of these days is because you fuck little Scrappy and you fuck Soldier Boy. Okay? And you were about to be on Love & Hip Hop ATL. That's it, okay? And then you talk about something I could give you advice and you, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm the bitch that you was looking up to when you was 13, 14 years old. Bitch, who the fuck would look up to a diamond? What the fuck has a diamond done that made an impact on this industry? Bitch, you are still trying to find your footing in this industry, okay? Calm your motherfucking wig, okay, bitch? Because I'm just, I'm over her. I am so over her in this cocky ass attitude and got the nerve to call everybody else cocky and, 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 and saying that they need to humble themselves. Like, girl, don't nobody look up to you. People that probably looked up, and especially since she's from New York, and they're going to say something, I'm finna try to run New York. Bitch, go back to Atlanta because you ain't running shit up in New York. Ain't none of them running New York. You show sure lane, okay? If anybody looked up to anybody up in there, they probably looked up to Kim. They probably even looking up to Nikki right about now, bitch. I don't know. They probably looked up to Ribby Ma, okay? Real motherfucking MCs. You know, Nikki's debatable. Well, mixtape Nikki. But real motherfucking MCs, you know, it is what it is. But, um... She's just irking my nerves. I did not expect her to be like this. Like, you're too pretty to have this ugly-ass attitude. And you're nowhere. You're no fucking where. It shouldn't, I shouldn't even have to start a video off each damn episode. From episode two to episode four, going in on your stupidity and your haughtiness. Okay? I don't give a fuck what nobody say. All right? And Naima... You know, when she sat back down, Naima good because she was like, okay, I take your uh, constructive criticism and, um, you know, I'll think about that and yada, yada, yada. And thank you. Bitch, wouldn't have been me. You good, Naima, because Ashley wouldn't have said a goddamn thing in that. Psh, bitch, please. Okay? Then them talking about some. So the lady was throwing me this party at this mansion and I want to invite everybody to come and spend the night. Naima like, even I can come? <sighs> I guess even you can come, bitch, so she can take my advice and I can teach this infant. I'm surprised you ain't got kids already. I'm just saying, look at you. You look like you fall into the statistics of that unwedded pregnancy. Move on. Move on. This situation with Brianna Perry and her mama, I feel she did the right thing towards the end. When she wound up firing her mother because they discussing her career and they having this meeting with the label. Brianna's mother is on one 
Brianna's mother seemed like she kind of living through her daughter. And she putting out demands that she wants to happen for herself. And not listening to her daughter. And you're the manager. And you're doing this interview and you're talking to the people at the label, wherever the hell you at. And Brianna told you not to say this stuff. She don't want to move extra slow. She want to speed it up just a little bit. I don't see nothing wrong with it. She know what she want to do. You know, she's a grown ass woman. She needs to learn how to open up her mouth and voice her opinions. Every time she tries to talk, her mama interjected. And then has the nerve to say, well, I'm speaking on behalf of her. She's sitting right there, let her speak, okay? That's what you want. What do your client want? Matter of fact, you work for her. So don't speak for her. Let her speak for herself, okay? You book stuff and all that stuff, but let her speak for herself, all right? Just because you a mama don't mean shit. This is business. And sometimes when you're working with family, especially with the mother and all that stuff and, and, and the parent, them lines get blurred. So that's what happened. You know, she wound up having to fire her mama. Because her mama straight went up in there saying all the opposite of what Brianna wanted. And then going to say to the to the um, stylist person, oh, why would you put her in there? Because that make that metallic, that's kind of, oh, that's this, that's that. And I'm like, this ain't for you. Ask Brianna, do she like it? Okay? Ask her. It was just like, girl, shh. Let her do her. You know, she going to school for this stuff. So I'm pretty sure she'll be all right. And even if she don't and, and, and she make a mistake along the way, she's a grown woman. And this is what she's supposed to do. In life, you have to make mistakes to learn, okay? And if she make a mistake, this will be a learning lesson for her. Let her do that on her own, okay? Um, <laughs> but it was kind of bogus. It was kind of bogus when her mom was like, so it's going to be a press day. And we got this set up, this set up, this set up. Her mama set all that shit up for her to fire her ass right then and there. I would have been like, bitch, you could at least did it after we finished this shit. <laughs> That's probably what her mama was thinking. But, you know, it is what it is. This situation with Saya, I felt so bad for Saya because Saya is like in a fucked up situation. Tank, I feel like Tank is dicking her around, and I feel like even though Kels, he been up in the, um, been her friend or whatever, been helping her out, you know, he's doing it out of a place that is for him. I don't think he's just doing it because he want to support her and he want to see her succeed. I think he just doing it because he feel like he can get in on that action, you know? You sitting in a meeting, and she already said when she was with Tank that she wasn't sent a sign on a manager with a contract and stuff like that. And then you bring in this paper and automatically start talking about, you know, I've been working for you, with you for a year, you know, taking events for the last two months without even overgoing to see my child and, and, and all this stuff. And I was like, pause, pause, that's you, okay? You do not, you do not put your child on the back burner, especially if you just got this baby. You do not put, and if they young, you do not put your child on the back burn. You go out there and you get some income that's actually coming in steadily, all right? You don't go off of hopes and dreams at this point, all right? And then going to say something. That, that just blew me. Like, really? This girl ain't really, you know, ain't shit really popping, popping, popping for you to be just sitting around waiting for her to get some money to come in and you to slide this contract in. And like Sire so says, you know, the managers get 10 to 20%. She ain't got it like that. So, of course, she not finna sign no contract. All right? You know, if that's the case, she would have signed a contract with Tank. That's what I'm thinking, you know. And I, the way he did it, and he was trying to guilt trip her. Like, I've been doing this and all this without asking. You should have asked, and you should have presented that contract at the very fucking beginning. You the one that took it upon yourself to give your services out for free. So, therefore, that's on you. Okay? Mm, I didn't like the way. And then going to throw Renee up in there and trying to make it seem like Renee is the reason why she didn't want to um, sign the contract. And she was like, no, bitch. Hell no. This is me. And when she had that conversation with Renee, even though she could have been a little bit of influence now, you know, she was like, babe, why would she even bring my name up? That was no reason. I'm here for you. Whatever decision that you want to make, you can do it. You know, when you were in New York and whatever, they talk with their hands and stuff like this, and their shoulders go up all the time like that. You know, she was like, so what you going to do? I'm not going to sign the contract. Okay, then. I'm rocking with you. And I was like, Renee, 
you trying to redeem yourself from being a little bitch on the other episodes. Okay, you know, let's play supportive. All right. But that conversation that um, Saya had with... What's her name? What's his name? Tank on the phone. I felt... That's why I really felt so bad. It's like people are really dicking her around. And I just feel like they're doing it because of her image and, you know, who she is. And, you know, because she won't conform to... Let's be honest. Saya is ill with it, okay? When she was up in that booth, she was going to fuck off. Out of all the girls on this cast, she's the best rapper. And because of the way that she looked and she present herself, that's why, you know, labels ain't too quick to, you know, jump out at her because she's not willing to conform to putting on a dress and, and wearing these high heels and putting on all this makeup and whatever. They want to make her into something that she's not, and she's not with that. Then you got Tank talking about something where everybody else getting all this stuff done because they got a team, and you ain't got no team. I, was, I just felt so bad listening to that conversation because it don't feel like he's all the way there for her either. It don't. It really don't. So, you know, baby, you just need to dump him and, and go to somebody who actually... I don't know. Maybe she's not in a position at this point yet to dump him and go to better. But when you get there, you need to. Because them, connection um, them connections ain't really working. But um, who else? Bia. We finally get a little storyline with Bia. You know, and she was doing her little video shoot. And she was in all white and stuff. And she was very much with the... You know, kind of found out. I was like, she got to be Puerto Rican or something. She was either Puerto Rican or Dominican. And she was Puerto Rican. I said, I knew it. Do y'all know damn in Puerto Rican too? Bitch acting crazy like that. That explains a lot. You know, Latin blood, you, you do crazy, cr fucked up things. Trust me now. And, you know, she Puerto Rican. She doing all this, uh, uh, a video shoot or whatever. And I was like, okay, this is nice for whatever it was, for whatever I heard, I guess. But she was just very much giving me a little generic Aaliyah, one in a million video tees when she was in all that white and she had to swoop over. I was like, oh, okay. Hmm. She was giving me a Walmart version. And I was like, that's cute. All right. I don't know what you're rapping about, but that's cute. Whatever. She get this phone call from her sister on the break telling her that she got suspended. Her sister, 13 years old. Um, she living with her mom. And I believe Bia did say in the first episode or whatever that she was raised by her grandparents or something like that. And I know she was talking about her uh, sister's relationship with her mother is not the best. So basically, you know, she's like the mother figure to her. And I can respect Bia for being concerned about her family and, um, you know, trying to keep her sister in line. And she don't want her sister to go down the same path that she was going. She was like at 13, you know, she was out there smoking weed, talking to boys, fucking and um you know doing all types of shit that she shouldn't have been doing and she don't want her sister to go down that path and she literally was on a photo shoot and she had some other stuff to do and she literally passed up money to go back to boston to talk to her sister face to face and i was like that's real because they actually probably want to do that no hell no i mean i cuss you out over the phone that's what I'm going to do, okay? Because I'm going to have to cuss you out over the phone. You fucking up, bitch. I'm going to hurt your feelings so bad over that phone. You're going to wish that I stay my ass out here. And I'm, I'm going to cuss you out so good that I'm going to have to stay out there and continue working so I can calm the fuck down. And then when I finish and get that money, I'm going to come back and I'm going to cuss you out face to face. And then we're going to hug it out and cry. That's what we're going to do, all right? But Ashley, mm-mm. I mean, I get it. I understand that people are different. That was cute, though. That was cute, though, but it wouldn't have been me. Um, little bitch gonna say something. You don't understand. It's a lie. And I'm like the youngest in my class. Girl, girl, I'm finna get rid of the friends that I'm with. Girl, you better, you know? And it was cute, though, that she actually had that little interaction with her sister. That was cute, though. Would you pass some money to go back and give a conversation that you could have gave over the phone? I would have... But anyway, that was basically the episode. It's cute. Um, next week, Soldier Boy. Look, Soldier Boy making his rounds. Okay, he finna be on a series. Now he on this show. We shall see. And and once again, 
We ain't even talking about her music. We're talking about the relationship with Soulja Boy. Girl, let me shut up. Let me shut up. I'm, I'm done. I'll see y'all later. Peace.